thank you for the kind invitation at this uh, wonderful conference. You have managed to organize it in a fantastic way. I am really astonished by how this conference is easy to, to follow. Um, I would like to introduce you uh, a little with uh, our experience in uh, what has been already told yesterday about reinventing the wheel once again. Uh, we have been digging a little into the uh, uh, problems of modularizing low-level operations in Fortran because we had a need a few days ago, a few years ago, I would say five years ago, uh, we have entered into this problem uh, just to, to give a, a quick uh, idea of which was our motivation. Uh, we are developers of another density functional theory code, uh, like uh, uh, Nick was for Siesta. We developed a code named the Big DFT. Uh, we had, uh, therefore, particular problems in dealing with high performance computing on very large supercomputer architectures. Uh, because this code is conceived for simulations of uh, large systems which have complicated the setups and complicated input files to be handled by the end user. So uh, we have entered into problems, uh, into uh, uh, requirements on our side that uh, would uh, suggest us to find solutions to deal with uh, uh, input output files, which are manageable and uh, user friendly and also interpretation of the behavior of the code in a high performance computing environment. So the idea was to find a way to structure the low level operations of the big DFT code, such as a performance evaluation and the prediction about the behavior of the code on large scale supercomputers could have been more manageable. So that would uh, brought us into a series of considerations, uh, which led us to the building of this library, which we called on purpose futile uh, libraries, is dealing with low level operations that e any code should have. Uh, and the big DFT software package was actually decomposed into various libraries and various packages that can be compiled independently. One of these is this futile one. I will briefly mention also the P solver package. And these packages, some of these are part of the ESL initiative that Nick had mentioned in his previous talk, which we second uh, uh, very much. We are strongly supportive in support of this initiative because we are seeing that the DFT community is now taking profit of the sharing of libraries that handle different operations that are generally implemented in very complex Fortran codes like this. So that was the main motivation which led us into uh, Futile. Uh, the, the reason also was to try to somehow uh, modularize not only our code, but also our ideas on how we would like somehow to write a computer code staying still in Fortran, but with some, uh, let's say, concepts that may be grabbed from uh, uh, practice, which are now common in other languages, uh, like uh, Python, for example. That is why we end up with this experience, which can be named like an embedded domain-specific language. Uh, the idea is uh, not only to generalize low-level uh, instruction, but also to uh, employ the Fortran standard, such as to define a kind of other syntax rules that would simplify the writing of the code as well as the interpretation of the code source by other developers. So the idea is really to use such kind of approaches to gather ideas in order to separate low level concepts. So allocation, for example, we will see some examples in the forthcoming slides from the actual implementations of them. So this is, in my opinion, an interesting uh, uh, slide which could uh, show at a glance what we 
um, what we mean, what we refer to by embedded domain-specific language. So this is the way which uh, we use in futile to allocate various uh, pointers or arrays. So here we only have a local table in this example, but the pointers can also be allocated in the same spirit. We see that uh, we use uh, an idea, a set of idea which grabs the syntax from C, yet with some extensions that are uh, suitable uh, uh, thanks to the fortune specifications. In particular, optional arguments are uh, uh, things which in this context uh, can reveal very, very useful. So uh, if one wants to allocate an array, one can perform a call to, uh, 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 to uh, somehow a lazy call. There is not really a call behind this function. Actually, this is an overloading of the assignment operator. And this fmalloc here is a function which gives a dedicated data type that is associated to recognize this overloading. Regardless of the implementation, uh, we could focus a little on the syntax, which is a way of generalizing the traditional Fortran approach to allocation with some goodies on top, the possibility of initializing an array to zero here, uh, the possibility of identifying the arrays with uh, some labels that could be useful uh, when profiling the code that uh, once again, I recall this is our main motivation. So this is an example on how this uh, 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 module can be employed in order to allocate arrays and pointers. Another good is, is that in our, uh, in our experience, it simplifies a lot life of the code reader. Here, this is a way that shows that one can immediately allocate an array with the same shape of another implicit shape, uh, assumed shape array, which has already been allocated, and copy the data inside. We, we all know that this routine, this uh, call would require few lines uh, of uh, routine that can be compactified in such kind of calls, which can be, of course, generalized to various intrinsic types, kinds, and rank, as we may, as we may imagine. So that is one example of what embedded DSL means. I would uh, uh, present another one, which is uh, uh, motivated by the usage of uh, uh, structured input files. So we have uh, the uh, problem of dealing with uh, complicated uh, libraries, which may have various arguments in triggering their behavior. We, can, uh, uh, we have to hum somehow to transpose the input parameters that the user provides into optional or uh, particular arguments that have to be inspected by the uh, host routine. So in that way, uh, we uh, employ again, like the same idea which Nick presented in his previous talk, the dictionary uh, uh, principle in order to uh, somehow uh, transpose the concept of input parameters inside the uh, Fortran uh, the Fortran code. So the idea is that in this way one can develop a library with a well-defined API and if the dictionary is one of the input parameters of the, its initialization routines of the library, the intrusivity in the code that employs this library is reduced into a minimum. New version of the library can be easily generalized and be backward compatible with respect to previous implementation. Let's uh, give a small example about that. First, uh, I would like just to, to show here what the DSL we have in implemented means from the context of dictionary. We have employed a, a, a slightly different syntax with respect to the one uh, which uh, uh, Nick presented in his previous talk, which is inspired from Python. Uh, in Python, we have the get item uh, uh, um, that is, of course, uh, uh, implemented like, uh, like that. One would do uh, such kind of operations uh, with the Python syntax. Uh, we have identified uh, uh, as the best possible symbol for the get item operation in this context uh, is the uh, string concatenation, which would uh, enable us to have an intentional interpretation of the parentheses. 
In this way, we will have uh, uh, the uh, same approach that is uh, uh, setting uh, the values uh, uh, of this dictionary uh, of word caps uh, here. Um, this approach can even be uh, uh, superseded by the loading of uh, dictionary is the YAML strings. And you may get that this is uh, really important and very powerful when one employs the YAML strings as optional arguments. Uh, we have made uh, some use cases uh, for allocations of aligned arrays. We can have optional dictionaries inside the fmalloc syntax that would trigger particular allocators. That is very useful in our, in our use case. And this is the way to uh, retrieve, bake uh, the data and uh, uh, possibly to uh, somehow increment or change it. So that is a, a traditional, uh, another implementation. And again, it's another reinvention of the wheel, another implementation of the dictionary, which came from our particular needs. I should say we are kind of happy with that. We don't have pointers inside the possible values. Uh, we have discussed with Nick about the possibility also of uh, including pointers within these uh, uh, syntax, and I would say that this is definitely also possible. In any case, uh, the point is that with these uh, kind of objects available for the developer of a library, it could be possible to initialize uh, uh, other libraries thanks to these parameters in ten, in, instead of optional arguments. Here we have a small example with the Poisson solver I have mentioned before. There is one particular function which is important in this context, which is the initialization function of the uh, main opaque object which, uh, dr uh, which drives the usage of this Poisson solver. For what is worth, this uh, initialization uh, uh, function API requires a futile dictionary in this uh, uh, position. And one may imagine that this uh, dictionary can be manipulated by the host code of this library in order to activate or deactivate options that are compliant to the way in which the dictionary is internally read in this, uh, in this uh, library. So that is one example. Of course, one would like to map this dictionary approach into input parameters and output parameters. So the idea is uh, to have uh, a key value approach also at the level of the input file and why not also at the level of the output log files of the code. So we have uh, following these ideas of having a key value approach in the context of developing layers of uh, uh, li libraries for density functional theory that would eventually, uh, 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 that had eventually uh, brought us into the concept of including YAML as uh, 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 the syntax for big DFT input and output files. So, so log files and input files will and are now, uh, since a while, written in YAML uh, from uh, Big DFT. And these are features that are enabled by the futile approach. Of course, this is a simple comparison when you can see the difference between a namelist approach, an XML format, and a YAML format for the same input file of the Poisson solver library. This is, uh, as, we, as it has already mentioned in the previous session and already a few times during this conference, uh, YAML is an interesting language, uh, uh, markup language, uh, uh, because it's also human understandable and relatively easy to edit. Uh, uh, so it does not disrupt uh, user, uh, users' uh, uh, habits in dealing with uh, manual input files. So, uh, mm, the fact of having YAML together with dictionaries is that one can have two views of the input file, as we have already seen in the case of the Poisson uh, solver. But for the log file approach, one can, uh, we have written a low level implementation of a YAML uh, emitter that can deal explicitly with key value pairs. And that provides one of the typical examples that is written in the YAML specification. 
This is for those who may want to use YAML directly without having to deal with dictionaries, but it is easy to get that recursive routines can be employed when, once, when one wants to serialize a, dic a futile dictionary into YAML format. So uh, with this in mind, we have all the infrastructure that is needed to profile the code without increasing too much the intrusivity. Each of the profiling module would have its own local, uh, so global in the, in, the, in the fortune sense, but local to the, to, to the instance of the uh, uh, run of the big DFT code, uh, its own local dictionary in which all the information about uh, allocation and the uh, timing of routines is stored at runtime. So with APIs like these, which uh, uh, are relatively easy to imagine, in my opinion, one can uh, uh, obtain uh, timing files which are tailored for developer interpretation. So it is important in this case to know that uh, one can label the timings not only with respect to the routines that is originate the, at the origin of the performance, this is any kind of profiler can do that, but one can label the timings according to the specific way, so the specific label of the meaning of the operations in uh, the particular section of the code. So that is an idea that enables the user to get uh, how much time is spent in preconditioning the wave functions for what is worth, for what it means, not necessarily by focusing on the actual routines that are beyond this category. But this is our, uh, uh, um, the way in which we exploit the possibility of labeling code sections and storing the labels of these code sections for uh, uh, the entire existence of uh, uh, the, the code instance. So uh, this enabled to perform a complicated analysis that thanks to YAML output can of course be delegated to, uh, uh, to Python post-processing and uh, the user can get important information about the way in which the code behaves on large uh, scale computers. Uh, and of course, uh, there are a number of demos uh, to which uh, uh, one can refer to that are also linked uh, in the uh, web pages of Futile. You can refer to the supplementary material next to uh, my abstract in order to, to, if you want to have more information. So this is a, a, a glance in which the input file can immediately be uh, somehow translated into Python dictionaries that can be dumped thanks to YAML format and then read by the futile code and so on and so forth. So uh, this is the idea, the main ideas which I, are beyond futile. Uh, um, this is my, one of my last slides. Uh, we have discussed about code profiling, uh, uh, input output and memory handling, but we also have uh, other wrappers that make use of the Fortran standard and simplify the life of the developer of a library, which uh, are dealing with uh, MPI calls and uh, uh, linear algebra calls within the same spirit. So the idea, the main message is to keep the programming the most intentional as possible. So in a way that wouldn't spoil the high performance computing behavior of the code. So to read in a relatively more easy way the sources of the code and to interpret what is ongoing without having to dig into the implementation details of each low level uh, uh, structure. So of course I realize that this is only one among the various projects and very exciting projects I have seen during uh, this conference. Some of those I was also aware, I were also aware too. So this is our personal experience. And of course uh, uh, we are definitely willing to share and extend it if you think that this could be also of uh, uh, value for your use case. So that concludes my talk. Thanks for, for the listening. Thank you very much for this very instructive example of using key values.